we're going to talk about fashion history for our last unit. So fashion history. So what is fashion history? So obviously we talk about fashion cycles, right? So fashion cycles from down to peak to uh, decline, absolute stage, rise stage. So in the 1890s, so age of optimism. So it's rage time. Uh, so men's fashion at that time, you have the wing shirt colors, you have the sack coat, you have the waistcoat, and then have the escort tie. Escort tie is something like this. It's not the regular tie that we have right now, just this. And also pay attention to the slides that I give you right now. It's because your final presentation, your final project, it's very close to something like this. So this is kind of like an example for you to see. And then in the 1890s, uh, what influenced that era? It's the Victorian area. It's at, at the Queen at that time. So Victoria has a lot of clothing that you can see that. Um, you know what? Let me make this a little bit bigger so everyone can see. Um, so Victorian has a lot of clothing that kind of, you know, like looks like this, like a shape of clothes like that. And then let me clear this one first. And then let's go to, can I just do it like this? Nope. So the next one. So in the fashion trends at that time, so we talk about fashion trend as well. Fashion trend is what? Fashion trend is what popular at that time. So at that time, corsets. So corset is something that right now that you hold your uh, stomach in those corsets, bustos, and also something Gibson girl. It's very uh, popular at that time. Gibson girl. For everyone who is interested in what Gibson girl is, Gibson girl is actually not you know a really a girl or a person named Gibson. Gibson girl, it's actually a drawing, you know, like a comics everyone sees um, that's portray that what's the ideal woman at that time from the 1890s to 1920s. So it's just someone draw it up to see that right now, what's the perfect body shapes or what's the perfect girl it's going to look like. And then the silhouette. So the silhouette, it's the outline of the body. So it's the exaggerated hourglass. So everyone that's so good on your um, you know, five types of, uh, you know, different body types and we talk about hourglass shape. So exaggerate means that right now the hourglass shapes goes a little bit more along the way. So that means that, you know, like from the top and then right now the bottom, it's a lot bigger too. Also the top as well. So hourglass shape, it's very exaggerated in this sense. And then, um, sorry. And then next one, I really want to put this thing at the top because it's, keep giving me annoying the heck out of you. Okay, sorry. And right now, at the 1900s, at 1900s, it's the Edwardian era. Edwardian, Edwardian it's the era, it's after Victorian era because Edward, it's uh, her, her son. And at that time, you have automobiles first started at that time and also electricity as well. So for man fashion right now, then we have what? We have like a three-piece fashion suits and then crease and cuff uh, trousers. And then next one, what influence at the time is the industrial era. So then, you know, workers and all. So industrial, it's influence at that time. What's the fashion trend at that time? The fashion trend at that time, it's shirt waist. So obviously, higher waist on their shirts. Like old mutton sleeves. Like old mutton sleeve, it's something like this. So like old mutton sleeve. So it's kind of like a leg of mutton. So that's sheep, right? So like old mutton sleeve. And also, dust coat. Dust coat, sorry, not coast. Dust coat. So dust coat. Why dust coat come back? And, so why dust coat? It's invented as a fashion trend. It's because we just talked about this one. This is a uh, era that the first automobile came out. So the first automobile when it came out, it doesn't really have a hood over it. So everyone is driving without any hood. So, you know, when the rain comes or the wind comes, everything that dirts on the floor, anything like that, you know, it's kind of threw it on you. So they have kind of like a dust coat to protect them while they're driving or sitting in the automobile. That's the first dust coat that ever happens. And that's the first dust coat. That's how it comes from. And then the next thing it's oh, wait, sorry. We. Uh, next thing, it's a silhouette. So this time, the silhouette, it's an S-curve-shaped curve, curve silhouette on this one. So you can see that uh, 
in the in Victorian era, uh, we have the hourglass. And then right now, Edwardian era, we have the S-shaped silhouette. So the bottom gets a little bit more bigger right now. And then uh, also, right, 90. So 1910s. So 1910. Can anyone tell me that what's the most biggest thing that happens in 1910? If you go to a fact, uh, if you go to a history class, you probably knew. Uh, Michael, do you know what happens in 1910? Uh, the World War One. Perfect. There you go. Right, smart boy. So right now in World War One, think about it, at that time when World War comes on. Obviously, then military influence on the men's clothing a lot. So also, also the world, women's movement as well. So women wants to get more rights to it. And for men's fashion right now, military, because it's influenced by military, and then also trench coat. So you see something that like a trench coat like this happened at the time. And then so all, obviously what influenced fashion? So World War One at the time. And at the time, what's the fashion trend in there? It's a hobble skirt. So hobble skirt is the skirt that looks like this, that doesn't have a really long out length at the end of your hem, so you kind of walk a little bit more like hobble. And then the first bathing suit comes in as well. So bathing suits, it's invented in 1910s. And then also right now, we have something called bloomers. So bloomers is something like this. When it comes in here, and then it kind of like goes out a little bit. So this is what a bloomer is. It's a little bit different than what we have in the Edwin Din era with a, like an S-shaped one. So the S-shaped one is more a big one, but bloomers is a little bit smaller ones. And then the next thing that we're going to have it's the silhouette. The silhouette right now, it's a long inverted triangle. So I think everyone remembers when we talk about that in um, the types of figures, we have inverted triangle, that means an upside down triangle. Right now in 1910s, the silhouette, it's an inverted triangle, but it's longer. So they don't have something that's too short. So because at that time, obviously woman rights, uh, it's not as good as these days. It's like, it's not like they can wear whatever they want. You know, they cannot show too much skin. So, uh, so something that's a little bit like longer in a shape like this. And then, so this is the 19th century. In the 1920s, what do they have in here? So uh, prohibition, age of jazz. So jazz is a big thing at that time. In the men's fashion at that time, they have very, uh, very distinctive states at that time. It changes a little bit from the before. Because before we talk about, we have the three-piece suit. But right now, the suits have much more interesting uh, details on it. They have pinstripe. So remember everything, it's pinstripe. It's something that line kind of like this. Fedoras. So they take care of accessories as well. Fedoras means hats like this. So fedoras. So sweaters. And also knickers. So what are knickers? So knickers, it's something like this. So knickers, it's kind of like a short pants. Uh, not too short though, not like short shots, but then like knickers. It's like something that's over the knee length, that's called knickers. And then uh, the next one we have, it's something that we probably don't really want to have these days. It's called raccoon coats. So they use more animal furs at that time, starting to use that. What influence in that time? Warring 20s. So everyone start after the war, they start to get a little bit more money, uh, you know, um, jazz, you know, they want to have shows going on. And then in the 90s, what are the fashion trends? So fashion trends, one of them, it's the flappers. So the flappers is what? They are long beads, loose fitting uh, dress with shorter hemlines. You, so you can see from the 1910s to the 1920s, right now, their silhouette changes a little bit. It's because right now they have those under the knee length skirts. So the hemline goes from the feet up towards the knee right now. So you can see it like this. And they have costume jewelry and they have something that's called crochet hats. So crochet hats, I think that's very, uh, you know, popular these days because, you know, you need your hats and then it, and then you can like, you know, you can go to those uh, stores and you can get your own or like you can make it all by yourself. So crochet hats. So for the silhouettes in the 1920s, so what is it, uh, the silhouette in the 1920s? The silhouette in 1920s, it's more like a rectangle shape. So a tubular shape. So tubular shape, it's called like a rectangle shape. So you can see the clothing that they have right now, a little bit, um, a little bit, uh, you know, loose fitting. And then it kind of doesn't show really like the body shape, kind of like an hourglass shape as before. But you can see right now the hemlines can go a little bit higher. So you can see this one still low, 
but then this one can go under like the knee length already. And then you have something that, you know, evening wear as well. And then right now, you know, this is some pictures that in the 1920s, you can see the suits in there. You can see um, still have a lot of like World War I influence still at that time afterwards. And then you can, and you have like the hemlines go a little bit higher. And then they have like, you know, the beats clothing like this. And then right now, the next one, it's 1930s. So 1930s, what's influenced the big thing with 1930s? It's the rise of movie stars. You have the men fashion with the straight wireless trousers. So you have something that close like this. And then you have like a sweater vest. So like a, like a vest, so you know, you don't have something that on the sleeve. And what influenced that era? So obviously afterwards, after World War I, you have something that's, uh, you know, like depression era, people lose job about it. You, you do have more uh, entertainment wise, but then obviously a lot of people lose, uh, lost their home and then jobs because of the war time. And then for the fashion trend in the 1930s, so something that's called a hands me downs. Can anyone, do anyone knows what's a hands me down? I like it, no one answers me. That's quite similar. Uh, sure. Michael, what, what do you think is the hands me down? Like, um, I think that, let me see. Sure, like so, anyone can check Google, whatever that is, I don't mind. <laughs> so, hands me down. This, this is quite interesting. Oh, okay. Oh. So, Michael, you will teach me that right now. So, what <laughs> that me down? Uh, Chris, yes. I have a no idea. <laughs> oh, you have no idea? Sure. Chris, do you want to try? What's a hands me down? Hands me down, like put the hands under that? <laughs> sure. I, I like that answer. Uh, Sophia, what about you? What's a hands me down? What do you think that's a hands me down is? Uh, put like put your hands like when I ask everyone, do you know the question? And everyone put their hands down and then oh thank you, Anne. Anne is raising your hand. Okay, Anne, what do you think it is? Uh, I think maybe that's a have the same mean with a second hand like pass on from another person, right? Thank you. So I know right now Anne is the only one that has internet at home right now because like she can check whatever it's on Google. So hands me down, it's very simple. It's like, I, I actually uh, happens to have, you know, quite a lot of hands me down. And that's the very sad part of the story. It's because I only have an older sister who is five years older than me. So I got, actually I got, you know, you know, socks that have a lot of lace in it. So hands me down, it's something that, you know, if you have a brother and sister, they will have their clothes, right? But then your younger brother or younger sister will have your clothes. And the next one will have their clothes. So like, this is something that for family, obviously is not, you know, that rich at that time. Or even like right now, like even in the 80s and the 90s, something like this happens as well. You know, in some of the countries, uh, like my country, you know, Indonesia, we have something, we have something like that. And it's hands me down something that you pass it along. You know, your brother will give the clothes, you know, to the sister, whatever they can wear. Well, except underwear. But then uh, whatever they can wear, they'll pass it along. So that's something called hands me down. It's like from top to down. So at that time, oh. the fashion trend, yes, exactly. So <laughs> the fashion trend, sadly, at that time in the 1930s, one of the fashion trend, it's hands me down. One of them, it's what it's called. It's a flower set clothing. So what is flower set clothing? I think everyone goes to a store, you know, you can buy a bag of rice or flour sack. Think of it like a big plastic bag. Right now, the person will just wrap him or herself with a, with a bag like this. And then they have, they have like a string or rope tied in between. And that's clothing. So that's obviously, it's a very, very sad thing. Uh, but then for the, uh, for the better ones, it's right now, you have bias cut dresses. So uh, right now, dresses like this with a better cut with it. And then also waistline restore. Remember, we talk about 1920s. We have the body shape, it's tubular shape. 
So it's a rectangular shape. Rectangular shape doesn't have any, you know, shows any kind of body shape out of it. So, but then right now in the 1930s, right now, waistline is restored. They want to put back, they want to show where the waist is right now. Hems line, again, dropbacks. Remember we talk about when the 1920s, when you have the makers, the, the hems lines go back up a little bit. But then right now, the hems line goes down, goes back down right now that you can see that it's almost close to your ankle point. Okay, so in a 1930s uh, fashion, you have something that's called an elongated hourglass again. So this is very, sim uh, this is very uh, uh, similar to what we have like 1910s with the uh, elongated, uh, exaggerated hourglass. But then right now, elongated means that right now it's stretched longer. So the hourglass shape is a very long shape. So you can see that right over here that you have the top, but then right now the bottom ones that you have it like this. Kind of like what you have in an A-line dress, okay? So that's what we have on our uh, 1930s. Oh, I'm not even half done. <laughs> so, <laughs> so 1930s, it's, uh, you have uh, like pictures like this, you know, you have a little patterns and you have, you know, kind of like shiny fabrics as well at that time, so you can see. And then uh, 1930s, uh, you know, we talk about, you know, movie star influence. So 1940s. So again, 1940s, can anyone tell me what's a very important thing happens in the 1940s? In the four, I mean, <laughs> the four is the, the, the Second World War ends. There you go, perfect. 1940s, thank you so much. 1940s, we have Second World War. You know what, whenever war happens, you know, fashion, um, you know, uh, you know, economic wise, obviously it's gonna take a big hit, right? So 40s, rationing. Rationing, I think that uh, for the ones who take my, who taught my uh, grade 11 class, we have something called rationing with the clothing, right? Rationing means that right now, uh, each, uh, the government will give you food, fabrics during the wartime to kind of like take care of your needs. But then you only get as much, like only like sets of foods, only sets of fabrics. So right now, the couture, couture, it means what? It means the odd couture. Remember we said haute couture starts from Paris, right? Right now, haute couture leaves Paris, goes to other places as well. Right now, New York, you know, gains importance, you know, London afterwards, uh, you know, uh, you have, uh, you know, Japan afterwards, all those other countries start to get more couture stuff, haute couture. Right now, men's fashion, whatever influence, obviously. During wartime, what can influence them? Obviously, uh, war, theme clothing, right? So military style, and then also the bomber jacket. So you see this handsome boy, it's uh, dressing a very cute uh, bomber jacket like this. And then what influenced the era, obviously. World War II, right? Uh, obviously a very sad thing though. Uh, military influence at that time. And then uh, the fashion trend at that time, convertible suit. So what is a convertible suit? Convertible suit, that means that right now, when you take that uh, the, the first one off, and inside you have, let, let's say three piece, so you can change the combination as you want. Slacks, that means that right now that you have a whole uh, whole kind of like pants without showing those, you know, uh, body shape and lines. That's when Howard jacket. So that's when Howard jacket, it's something that comes from the military style. So it's something like this. You have a very high waist and you have, you know, the regular sleeve, but something that's very high waist. And then something that's is coming, start coming from the 1940s is something called padded shoulders. That means they put paddings on your shoulders to make your shoulders much more, you know, bigger. And I think that if your mom is from 80s or if your mom is from 90s, they definitely might wear something like this before. I know my mom did. Um, so next one that we're gonna talk about, it's 1940s silhouette. So 1940s silhouette, it's what? 1940s, it's an inverted triangle silhouette. So remember we talk about in the 1940s, everyone liked to wear, you know, shoulder pads, right? So obviously the shoulders, they will look a little bit way more bigger than usual. So you can see the pictures that right now and here, even with the hats, they have like, you know, big, big, you know, this one have a, like a small kind of, you know, poncho thing in there, but then obviously shoulders point, it's what they want to concentrate on. Okay, so 1940s. I'm almost close to the midpoint mark. 1950s, after the war, what happened? After the war, obviously, uh, well, you have Cold War, but then after the war right now, uh, 
ever since World War II, obviously, uh, world comes to much more of a peace at that time. So you got baby boom. So you have a lot more kids right now these days. Teenager emerges. So in the 1950s, a lot of that happens. And if you think that a lot of kids right now that's running around the street, obviously right now as a fashion company, you want to not only target the adults right now, you don't want any hands me down anymore. You want to target also the kids and teenagers. So for the fashion trend right now, that we need to take a look at this one, the men's fashion, fennel suit in charcoal gray, navy and brown, before the clothes, they don't have that much clothing choices for a man with the suit's colors. Right now they have cardigan, uh, sweaters as well, and also hats. But right now for the fashion, they have something for teenagers as well. So teenager boy, they wear their chinos, button down shirts, and also loafers as well. Or right now when you have those kind of, you know, more bad boy look, you have the tight jeans, you have the t-shirts, you have the leather jackets, and also 1950s is what happens, obviously. Uh, sneakers happened right now at that time. We start to get really big, you know, Pumas, Converse, Adidas. I think some of you, when you're doing the advertisement, you knew. So these are some of the fashion at that time. What influence at that time? Uh, can anyone tell me who this guy is? Elvis Presley. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Sophia. Right, so I hope everyone know who this is. Obviously, he is like you know, like the father of rock and roll. You know, he's from Memphis, very good. You know, rock and roll singing. Uh, so at that time, rock and roll influenced a lot. So people dress much more like it at that time. For the 1950 fashion trends, for the teenagers. So you can see right now in the 1950s, a little bit more than different than before. 1950s, it's the first era that in this hundreds of years, that fashion industry starts to pay attention to kids' clothing. Before it's kids' clothing, it's more of a hands-me-down, you know, the brother will turn to the sister, sister will turn to the brother again, you know. But right now, they want to target kids more right now. For the teenage girls, you have something called a poodle skirt. What's a poodle skirt? Poodle skirt, it's as what it is. It's a skirt that has literally like a poodle in there, like a poodle, a picture in there. They have saddle shoes that look kind of like this, like a two-tone shoes, and a capri pants. Capri pants, you can think of right now what everyone has. It's, you know, those, you know, high cut uh, jeans that they have. So this is what a capri pants looks like. So for the 1950s, for the woman, a very important thing happens at that time. And if you're doing 1950s, I'll definitely want you to talk about it as well. It's right now, they talk about the new look from Christian Dior. Okay, so that changes how the fashion industry for women's clothing, you know, from the little black dress and everything from there. Okay, and then the silhouette at the time, in the 1950s, it's an hourglass silhouette with an accented lower half. What does it mean by that? That means that it's still an hourglass shape like this. So what you can see, it's still an hourglass shape, but right now, the lower half, they have accented something that changes a little bit as well. So you, have, you can see that right now, they have layers with it, or right now with an accented tone out of it. So you can change the colors a little bit, although they're not showing in here, but that, that's what's the census. Um, and then right now, next one, we are going to go to 1960s. 1960s, so a lot of you, from Vietnam, probably knew that in 1960 what happened with the new Vietnam conflict and with the British invasion as well. So with the men's fashion, they change a lot out of it. It's right now they have like bright colors. They have the neuro jackets. So the neuro jacket, it's right now, it's kind of like they have like a high collar for the jackets. And then also 1960 is something that when turtleneck came up. So I think everyone knows what a turtleneck is. You know, it's the, the one that you can roll up until where your neck is. And in the 1960s, whatever happens at the time, influenced the clothing, it's civil rights. It goes a lot towards afterwards as well. Obviously, civil rights is right now, then you talk about, you know, the black movement culture. So in the 1960s, with the civil rights and then before the women movement, you can see the clothing and women changes a lot. Right now in the 1960s, 
women can wear mini skirts right now without getting, you know, criticized of anything. And also they have like, you know, pantsuits for women. Before women always needs to wear dress, you know, to work. But right now they can wear suits pants as well. So same thing as men. And you have something that's called a pillbox hat. Kind of look like this. So this is a picture of pillbox hat. And then the next thing that right now, 1960s. Remember we talk about fashion, talk about something classic. Fashion is always a cycle. So right now, the tubular cycle came back. Remember in around 30s, right now we have a tubular shape. So tubular shape came back again. So you can see that right now we have different colors. We have more vibrant colors. Hemline schools a little bit higher. And then you have more like, you know, different obviously hairstyle as well. But then you have something tubular shape. So rectangular shapes uh, style came back again. So this is 1960s. In the 1970s, uh, so in the US, obviously, energy, energy crisis and then the Watergate incidents. For the woman, we talk about 1960s with the civil rights culture. And then right now, the African cultural influence. So they have more rights right now. The African women, uh, you know, like not just women, men and women, their cultural influence more of what you want to uh, design. So the patterns. So hemlines drop. Hemlines right now goes down a little bit more. Punk, so you know, punk rock, right? So you know punk rock in measures as well. Elegance contrast from uh, Laura Ashley, something just came out from that time. For men's fashion, right now, suits are not only go, uh, suits are not only uh, go to work. You have something called last year suits. Last year suit is something that when you take a look at something like this, so this is called last year suit. You can use this suit to go to dance, you can go to disco, you can go out to drink with this kind of last year suit. Boat neckties. A lot of different brighter colors next type this, uh, right now. And something that 1970s came out, it's called fair pants. So that means that at the bottom of the pants, it goes out a little bit. So on the pants, you know, it flares out. So it's called fair pants. And then in the 1970s, you have something that's, oh, sorry. In the 1970s, you have, you know, what influence at the time? So it's, you know, hippie style. You have the disco era. Uh, Sophia, do you know who this is? I can't see anything. It's blurred. <laughs> is it an actor or what? It's from a movie. A John Travolta? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Do you know what movie is it from? Mm, not in English. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, try me in Spanish. Is it Spanish or uh, Portuguese? Portuguese, right? Try me in Portuguese then. Uh, oh, shit. Something about dance. Oh, no. Even Portuguese, you don't know. Uh, so I think this one is from Greece, uh, for, from the dance. Uh, so oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there you go. So, so at that time, influenced a lot. It's from. Of course. I know it's a long lesson. Uh, so obviously at that time, a lot of influence, it's, you know, uh, you know, hippie style or like disco era. So, you know, people dance around, go out. And then for this one, in the 1970s, clothing start to be more unisex. Men will dress, you know, kind of like more feminine. You can see this one, you know, like the man has a really hippie style, have really, really long hair and then you got tight clothing, but then fair pants. Both flower patterns. We talk about in the 1960s. What happens in there? Civil rights. Um, you know, you have the black movement culture. And then at that time, they bring in more, you know, patterns with, you know, flower patterns, flower prints. And then right now, we have something called platform shoes. Platform shoes, it's something that like this. Platform shoes is like the lower part. It's very, very high. And then um, you have something called fair prints. So fair pants, again, so this one, it's the pants that goes out a little bit at the bottom part. So you can, you can, uh, you can tell that, you can see that that's called like the bell bottom pants as well. And in the 1970s, what is the silhouette for women in the 1970s? So in the 1970s, it's an A-line silhouette. So you can see that this is kind of like an A-shape. And you can see the African cultural influence a lot in their clothing right now. So you can see like the accessories or the clothing colors. Uh, or the, even the clothing patterns too, okay? 
bear with me. We're almost good. 1980s. So 1980s. Men's fashion. Remember we talk about the suits right now with different colors goes back to pinstripe again. Narrow lapels. So that means the shoulder in here, it's much more narrow. And then skinny ties. The ties are not as thick as before. It's very skinny. skinny. And right now, the 1980s. What's 1980s people like? Me 1980s is the me generation. It's the conservative consumption. And then the last one, this is something that we talk about for so long. Conspicuous consumption. Can anyone tell me what conspicuous consumption is? Anyone? I see. I see. Anne, can you tell me what conspicuous consumption is? Uh, can I answer? Of course! Okay. Uh, it's like when you buy things to uh, show an image of somebody who you are or are not. You, you buy things only for appearance. It's like Perfect. superficial. Perfect. There you go. Conspicuous consumption. In the 1980s, conspicuous consumption start because you can understand from the 1940s, after the war, it's been a long time, there's peace a long time, uh, countries develop. You know, uh, I know in the 80s, China start to get really big. Uh, you know, um, 60s, 70s, after the war, Japan got really big again too. So all those places start to get really, really um, rich economic-wise. So a lot, of a lot of kids that grew up in that era start to earn more money and then they want to show, show off of what they have. Conspicuous consumption. Started in the 1980s. And then in the 1980s, what influenced in that era? EP movement. So, you know, you have a lot of young uh, professional at that time. And then you have those going for, you know, new techno era as well. You know, the first cell phone came out, you know, uh, different kind of watches came out. The watches you have, you, you can have calculated in that time. A lot of new things came out at that time, and then a lot of people are earning suddenly earning much more money at that time. So obviously, when the economic it's good in this world, fashion follows as well. And then at that time, eighties, what happened? Eighties for women, they are much more. Um, they are much more. Uh, They're much more alert with their body shape at that time. So uh, they like to go for, you know, yoga, exercise. So exercise wear, it's something that's very popular at the time. You can see someone that, you know, like this, and then you think that, oh, she'll probably just wear this at the yoga base. No, uh, they actually wear this outside on the street as well. So another thing that we talk about, conspicuous consumption, what's going to be uh, the trend? Logo wear. Logo wear, that means that right now on your T-shirt, on your shirt, Whatever that it's back, uh, backpack, pants, they want everyone to see what the logo is. They want to, want to know what kind of brand it is. Also, designer jeans. At that time, few designer jeans is very popular. You got Calvin Klein, you got Levi's, you got Lee. All those, pants, all those jeans are kind of like designer's wear. And then, in the 1980s, that's two looks of it. One, it's power dressing. Power dressing, that means that you dress like work. And then preppy, same thing, more like school, business suits, shoulder pads comes back. So shoulder pads is something that you put it on the shoulders to make your shoulders look a little bit more wider and like straighter. Khaki pants, sweaters, and again, logo wear, designer jeans, this is something. And then one that's more of a material girl, valley girl, like that. Flounce skirt, so you have flounce skirts like this, and polka dot carolines. Poco dot Carolines, it's the dress right now. Then you have a lot of different polka dot in there. And then one, it's exercise wear. Exercise wear, it's right now when you go to gym, when you go to um, yoga, those are called exercise wear, which is a lot of people wear these days as well. And then 1980s, it's a European V inverted triangle uh, silhouette. So you have kind of like a V shape like this. So it's still an inverted triangle but it's a European V shape. So that's the 1980s. And then right now, so 1980s, you got clothes like this. You have, you know, 
kind of like the uh, power suit that you have like this. You also have, you know, like, you know, more shiny materials at that time too. Uh, you see a lot of reflective material like satin, uh, you know, silk, something like this. And then in the 1990s, so in the 1990s, we talk about 1980s, it's about the EP movement. EP movement, it's, you know, when the technology start to have. In the 1990s, what, what did they start over there? Technology, very important at that time. So at first you have what? You have internet at the time. At that time for women, minimalism. That means that right now they don't want too much, you know, um, accessories, or they don't want too much prints on their clothes. They want something that's minimal. Right now in the 90s, it's a retro 60 and 70 styles right now. So in the 90s, brings back what 60 has. And also street fashion comes back a lot. And so street fashion, people pay more attention to it. In the 1990s, uh, when you have those magazines, they have a lot of street fashion ads, uh, you know, skateboard fashion, a lot of different things. For the men's fashion, a lot of influence and from what? It's from the hip hop influence. You know, uh, you know, like from rappers, uh, they like to dress, you know, the Air Jordans, the oversized t-shirts, the oversized jeans, a lot of hip hop influence in it. And for the women's fashion, also they have the grunge and oversized fit as well. So grunge, I'll show you the, the grunge look, how does it look like. So in the 1990s, you know, they have a lot of boy bands, you know, technology wise, you know, that's how people dress in the 1990s. And then at the grunge look, it's like this. So this is what a grunge look is. You have the flannel shirt, you have a jeans. So this is a grunge look and you're the bare midriff. So bare midriff, ah, again, I can ask Sophia. Sophia is my celebrity sightings person. Sophia, who is this? Britney Spears. Oh, okay. Today you pass. <laughs> <laughs> so right now you can see uh, Britney Spears become very big in the 2000, you know, 1990s. And um, so at that time, a lot of uh, a lot of them likes to wear, you know, something that midriff to kind of like shows your tongue, abdomen, and uh, you know, two piece formal suits, so something like this. Uh, they like to not wear anything inside to kind of shows. Right now, the woman movement as well, they have a more like masculine. They can show a masculine uh, like side as well. So this is the 1990s fashion trend. And the 1990s silhouette, same thing. It's still an A-line silhouette. So you can see that a lot of it like this. So this is a 99 clothes. Now this one, 1990s, this one, it's a Yoji Yamamoto's one. They have a lot of Japanese influence on that one. And then the next one, it's right now telling you, fashion trend, you know, repeat almost like 20 to 30 years. So every 20, 30 years, it's kind of like a cycle. No body should buy. <laughs> sure. That works too. So next time we'll add something more. It's like no low waist jeans are allowed on our on our slide as well. So and then um uh Christian Dior, you know, uh, and Coco Chanel, two uh, very good designers within the last hundred years at that time. And then um so Coco Chanel is from where? Coco Chanel is from uh, fashion influence from the 1920s uh, until the World War II and resurfaced again in the 1950s. And then uh, one of the things uh, that she did really good was with the little black dress and the costume jewelry and a revolution, obviously, in the woman clothing as well. And then Christian Dior, on the other hand, has something that's called the new look. Uh, she changes what it is. It's a full bust lines, so you can see. And also makes it very tiny waist, so makes more like the hourglass shape out, oh, and also full skirts as well. So you can see that this is uh, what the uh, um, last last um, hundred years of look like. You know, you have the twenties, you have the thirties, forties. Uh, right now, this is 50s, 60s, and it is like 70s, 80s. You can see the pants kind of look like this, right? And you can also see that. The, the, the dress that woman has turns a little bit more like some more masculine too. Right now, before they can only wear skirts and right now they can actually wear pants as well. And right now, you know, obviously this is the 80s, 90s, 2000s, and they can wear, you know, like tank tops, whatever they want. Okay. So this is our slides. And then, oh, you know what? Let me keep recording that uh, because I'm going to talk about what we need to do on our final project. 
So on our final project, so we talk about the slides from here, which is a really, really good slide. Uh, our final project is, sorry, let me go back up. Our final project is this, fashion and influence. I need you to, so during the slide, we talk about, you know, 1890s to until 1990s. Pick a specific era and investigate clothing options for men, women, or children. So you can do men, women, children, or you do men, 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 or you do women, women, women. Uh, just don't do all children's because uh, sometimes children have less um, clothing choices. Describe notable, notable fashion in, uh, innovation associated with various uh, historical periods. So for the fashion design drawing, so obviously the first thing is choose one time period. So you have all this period. So once you choose the period, obviously you can put me uh, put in the text and let me know which one you choose. The second one is research the different kinds of fashion design associated with your uh, chosen um, movement um, time period. So obviously research what they wear what they dress like, what influenced them at that time. In your, sure. In your, in your, um, in your sketchbook, I need three drawings to show different fashion design outfits in that era. So that means that right now, Sophia wants to do the wrong 20s, then she has to do three different ones on the 20s in there. So points, your finished drawings will show three different designs related to chosen time period. So something that on the raw 20s, I don't want to see fair pants in it because that one is from the 1970s, okay? Consider the element and principle uh, design, line, form, shapes, colors, unity, patterns, you know, all the things that you learn in this class, how you use patterns in there, put it in there, colors wise, everything wise. Your design must show clear evidence of a research source of a time period. Obviously, I need you to research. I want you to find the right clothing in there, and I want you to explain each clothing as well. You may use PowerPoint um, for it. Mr. Simon? Yes. Okay, uh, can you send again uh, some of the picture that in the show? Sure, I'll do it afterwards. Can I do that okay. afterwards? Thank yes. you so much. Uh, you can tell me which one I'm missing then. So you can just look at this one first, okay? So, your designs must show clear evidence of the research source of the time period. Obviously, I need you to do, you know, good research out of it. And you may use PowerPoint for your presentation. I want the poster, but you can also use PowerPoint. So presentation points. So what time period have you choose to uh, research? Obviously, talk about the time period. Uh, when you have the clothing in there, when you have the clothing out, you can tell me what points is it. You can tell me that what are these clothing are for? What season do they use it for? Is it for winter? Is it for summer? Is it for uh, swimming? Is it for, um, you know, is it for outside walks? You know, what is it for? What kind of materials do they use at that time? Uh, what kind of mood? It's just, you know, something that, you know, like a blue mood, you know, it's just something that, you know, for going out. Remember to include what they uh, wear at that era. So, so what influenced that era? So what influence in there? What's the fashion trend at that time? What is popular at that time? What is the silhouette at that time as well? You can find back on the slide, obviously. Uh, presentation is a minimum 10 minutes. Anything lower will result in a reduced map. So I want 10 minutes. Uh, again, like I'm not gonna be too harsh. If you cannot do 10 minutes, I'll keep asking questions until the 10 minutes is done. Uh, poster board, obviously I want you to put a title in there. I have kids that send me that lovely, lovely poster, but I don't even know what is it about, okay? Post it there, example. Right now, let's say for Sophia, she can do, you know, a fashion history of 1920s or she can do like wrong 20s. You decide whatever it is, but at least I want a title. So mark will be based on how well your presentation and how well your poster is. 25% uh, will be on the uh, presentation. Is it on point? Do you talk about, um, do you talk about all the things that I need to know? Uh, did you choose the right clothing for that era, time-wise? Uh, so time, I mean that, you know, like the 10 minutes time. So that's five marks in there. 50% uh, will be on the poster board, illustration. Did you use all the element and principle design on your illustration? Title, aesthetic of your poster, how nice is your poster? Is? So that's 10 points. 25% will be reflect question. So this time, not only, so remember each time when you do a presentation, I ask you a question orally to ask you which part you like, which part you don't like. 
this time you have to also write it out on a piece of paper and upload it as well. So this one is five marks. If you forget this one, it's not my problem. Okay. So you have to draw write three reflective questions for me. What aspect of your work do you find the most successful and why? Which part do you find it least successful and also why? If you can redo the whole thing again, what things you need to change? Okay. So reflect. Uh, so these are some of the examples that I get. Uh, you know, like in the 1940s, what do I have to put? So, you know, colors, I research colors. This is a lot of things that we did before. Right now, it's kind of all combination together to, to see what you have. When you have a hat in there, you have to tell me what kind of hat. Let's say Barrett hats, because, you know, they wear the hats at the time with the military styles in the 1940s, because it's what? It's dominant by World War II at that time. So obviously, so you have something like this. And obviously, you can, you know, have clothing. Uh, you can draw whatever clothes that you want. And this is the one that I did it on the 1990s. So you can have, you know, different kind of drawings in there to show people different styles. Uh, and then at the end, right over here, I have the rubric in here so that you can take a look at what I'm going to mark it on. Obviously, a lot of it will be marked on the art style, but also will be a presentation. How you how organized you are? Did you provide details? Is your presentation clear? It's everything researched under the topics. Do you use the right vocabulary for it? Uh, and then, so this is, um, so right now I can actually show you a new slide. Um, so everyone, if you're not sure what, how to do this, you can always go back to this recording and I can, uh, and I don't have to say it one more time. So this is an example of my class that before, so from Amanda. Uh, so this is about 1970s, right? So she did the poster like this. So in the poster, at least I want free drawings. And then you want to tell me background about it, um, whatever that you want to tell me. And then, you know, like she will talk about, talk about it through her presentation. She, you can include as much slides as you want and as much picture as you want. Uh, you can talk about the styles. You can talk about uh, uh, clothing. You can even talk about the hairstyles too. I don't mind. But obviously I want the clothing styles on each one on that one. Okay. So, uh, and then you can tell me that, you know, let's say this one is from the Queen's Prime Mercury. And uh, again, you know, poster board, you can tell me that at that time, let's say this one, 1990s, 1990s. So you can see that they talk about cotton as well. So materials wise, uh, how do they dress? Uh, what kind of clothing they have? Uh, who's I iconic in the 1980s to 1990s? How do they dress? You know, this one is Princess Diana. I know Sophia cannot see this. Um, but you know the drift and this one, you know, it's from friends. So that's how, you know, the people dress in that time. And then I have, you know, last one, you know, about 40s, about rationing and during World War II, what do they, what do they wear? What color type do they wear at that time as well? So these are the things that I'm looking for. So these are the samples. Um, let me stop the recording. One second, push.